What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, here at the top 5 gaming monitors from 2019, going over the best of the best that came out this year, and all under $1000. And I factored in things like sales, feedback, and reviews, so we can compile this list so you guys know which are the best out there currently on the market. I've done top 5 gaming headsets, keyboards, mice, microphones, and in all those comment sections everyone's been asking, when's the top 5 monitors dropping? So. A little bit later than I wanted to get this out, but hey, better late than never. So anything you like, I'll have it all listed for you in the description down below so you can check it out. Now coming in at number 5 is the Zowie XL2546 Davina. This one's a bit of an exception to the list, but I'll explain that in a minute. It's a 24 and a half inch 1920 by 1080p TN panel at 1 millisecond with a 240Hz refresh rate. Now the thing about this is the original version of this monitor is still one of the top rated gaming monitors on the market to date. It's still used widely in pretty much all esports events and stuff for gaming tournaments. And the reason for that is A, because it's a 1080p display so it's going to be easier for your graphics card to run. But then B, your GPU can then push the game to 240Hz to just take advantage of that. But like I said, it's a bit of an exception because the original monitor came out in 2017, so that obviously can't make the list, but these new Davina series, it's the same exact monitor, just in white. And if you ask me, I think we need more white monitors in the world, this is looking pretty nice. The image is rated at 93% sRGB color rating, and by default it has a pretty vibrant pop to its default setting, which is said is to help enemies stand out more. And by the way, for all the monitors here, I'll point out its highest color rating, whether that's DCI-P3, sRGB, or Adobe RGB. But as a trusted eSports panel, the display itself is very, very nice. And you also get a little added bonus with their control puck. It's this little module that has three quick settings you can toggle between, uh, the scroll wheel as well for navigating the menus, and it just sits nicely on the base of the stand. At number 5, this monitor is $479. Now at number 4, we have the MSI Optics MPG 341CQR. And this is cheaper than options like the Alienware 34 inch or the Acer Predator X34P, which didn't come out in 2019, so they didn't make the list obviously. But they're also only 120 hertz, while this one is 144 hertz. So a 34 inch 3440 by 1440p VA panel with a 1 millisecond response time, you get FreeSync and G-Sync, Hello Adaptive Sync, and the display is rated at 105% SD. RGB color rating, so a bit more oversaturated, but for most games, I'm sure people might like that more vibrant look, or you can always just go into the settings and adjust that color, but I didn't look at this and think, holy shit, that's way too bright. I think it looks pretty nice. This monitor also integrates their Mystic RGB lighting for some integrations in games to show you things like your health status in game, and you can see the light strip on the bottom there on the chin, and on the back side, although the back of the monitor, uh, the lighting is pretty minor, so you won't really see this unless your room is pitch black and you have a pretty lightly colored wall, but at least that front strip can add some benefit. The stand here is also pretty flexible with 100 millimeters of height adjustment, 20 degrees of vertical tilt, 60 degrees of swivel from side to side, but as you can see I did struggle to fit this on my monitor riser, it's just a bit large. Now some other cool additions we have here is they included a mouse bungee and a webcam mount for streaming inside the box. The bungee just locks into place on the bottom of the monitor so it can hold your mouse cable, which is a pretty nice idea. And then the webcam mount up top fits in this groove on the back side, uh, but it's definitely not hefty enough to hold like a DSLR or anything. And it's funny they include that because there's also a built-in webcam on the actual monitor. Now the quality is meh for sure, uh, but it does have some cool use for things like audio ambient light detection when it comes to the brightness, and you can set different user profiles so it can detect who's using the PC, and then change the settings accordingly. They also have an MSI OSD app for quick access to those monitor settings, which is a lot easier than navigating it through actual menus built into the monitor. I like this a lot better. Now it does claim 400 nits brightness for HDR, but when I was testing it, it barely hit 300. It's definitely one of the pricier options at this list at $799, but again, it's a very nice ultra-wide panel. But the price has dropped a bit to around $780 this week on Amazon. But good news, the prices all go down from here. Number 3 is the Aorus FI-127QP. A nice 27-inch 2560 by 1440 IPS display with a 1 millisecond response time. Native, it's 165Hz refresh rate with adaptive sync for your AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. We have a 100% color rating for the sRGB color spectrum, with 10-bit color as well, which is noteworthy because most monitors out there are only 8-bit color depth. Some things I like are their game assist features with an FPS counter, a timer, and crosshairs, 
Plus again, we have some built-in RGB lighting on the monitor itself with some back low. It's definitely brighter than the MSI RGB because it's on both sides of the back plus the actual stand, but it's still not going to be like a dedicated RGB light strip. Now, an interesting feature that made headlines at CES when this was announced is that the monitor actually has built-in noise canceling for your microphone. That of course is only through the built-in microphone jack. So that means if you have a USB mic or anything else, you're out of luck. And my first impressions when I heard that this had noise canceling was I thought it was like denoising the pixelation or some of the muddy textures in games, like, you know, talking visuals, not actual audio. And it does work, but it kind of sounds like you're talking into a glass jar. It just makes your voice sound a lot more hollow as it tries to eliminate that background noise. Um, I won't be using it because again, I have a USB mic. I like the MSI OSD with here in Gigabyte, we have the OSD Sidekick which gets you some cool things like screen overlays for monitoring your PC settings, like CPU temps, frequencies, FPS, and stuff like that. Even the ability to draw your own on-screen reticle. This does have HDR, but it's only 350 nits brightness, which again, leaves a lot to be desired. And we have another flexible stand here with 130 millimeters of height adjustment. It pivots 90 degrees, 40 degrees of swivel, and 25 degrees of vertical tilting. Oh, and the power brick is actually built into the monitor, so you just have a cable, no massive adapter on your floor. This one comes in at $649. Number two, where it starts to get very, very interesting, the LG 27 GL850, a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 nano IPS display with a one millisecond response time and a 144 Hertz refresh rate with adaptive sync, which is all an industry first. And it offers a fantastic image at 98% DCI P3 color gamut. And I think when looking at it, the color and just the black levels itself is probably the most appealing you'll find on a gaming monitor. With the Nano IPS, it does a really good job of looking similar to an OLED screen. And it's the same technology they use in their LG TVs. Not only that, but the panel itself has an anti-glare coating and it has very, very minimal bezels all around. HDR10 is supported, but again, it's very lackluster with just 350 nits brightness. Are you seeing a trend yet? The stand does have height adjustment, vertical tilting, and can swivel 90 degrees vertically, but the stand itself is pretty clunky. There's also no pivoting from side to side. Now, we'll say this does suffer from pixel trailing at the one millisecond fastest setting in the response time menu. Uh, so their world's first claim is true, but it's not worth those visual artifacts that you'll see. If you just have it at the fast setting when you're playing, it's gonna be, what, three to four milliseconds, and it's still gonna be just fine. The monitor is outstanding value at $499, but since this has been so popular, it's pretty much sold out everywhere. So it's kind of tough to find it in stock right now. So it was pretty tough to decide which is gonna be the best monitor for your money from 2019. I probably tested close to 20 monitors for this video, but ultimately one stuck out, but it was tough. Tough. That's right, the ASUS TUF VG27AQ. This is a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 IPS display with a one millisecond response time. It's a 144 Hertz refresh rate, although it can be overclocked to 155 Hertz with adaptive sync for Nvidia and AMD GPUs. Now, one killer feature that ultimately made me put this at number one is the backlight strobing with adaptive sync enabled, which is gonna greatly reduce any motion blur you might see. And out of all the monitors I've tested, this is the only gaming monitor with this feature for gaming at 144 Hertz. So you saw that pixel trailing with LG, and here, we don't have that. And Asus calls this extreme low motion blur, or ELMB. The image here provides nice and detailed and accurate colors at 99% sRGB, and it does support HDR, but again, 350 nits brightness. It's not gonna cut it. Now, built-in is Game Plus for, again, things like built-in FPS counters, crosshairs, a timer, and a pretty interesting sniper mode, which gives you a very tiny magnified, like, box in the middle of your screen. Now, if you use this, I'm not gonna call you a cheater, but... Kind of a cheater. Now we also have built-in speakers on this monitor and the most adjustable and flexible stand on this list with 130 millimeters of height adjustment, 38 degrees of tilting, 180 degrees of swivel, and 180 degrees of pivoting. All around, I think it's just the best option right now. Like I said, with the higher refresh rate when overclocked than LG, the stand is better, it has those built-in speakers, and the EMLB is just the deciding factor in the end. 
and this comes in at $429. Crazy good value. Now I said in the beginning, top five monitors, but with one honorable mention, and that runner up is actually gonna be the monitors that I use on my setup. These are the LG 34 GK 950 FB. They're flagship gaming ultra wide displays. And I've been using these since they came out. Now this technically launched at first just a FreeSync monitor, but it's still one of their G-Sync certified displays, you know, once Nvidia finally caved in and enabled G-Sync and stuff back in February. So this is one of the first to get approved. It's 3440 by 1440 P. Again, the nano IPS display at 144 Hertz with a one millisecond response time at their fastest uh, display setting. But again, like you saw with the other LG monitor, you're best just using this at the fast setting instead of fastest for around the five milliseconds of response time. This comes in at $799, although aftermarket sellers are giving it quite the price jump if you can find it. And I love them, and that's why they're my primary monitors for the channel. So what does this list tell us? Well, first off, HDR is just not there yet when it comes to monitors under $1,000. And second, the norm is pretty much becoming 1440p. Yeah, there's 4K gaming monitors out there, but none of them made the list in terms of sales for a 4K top selling gaming monitor under $1,000. And it makes sense because you look at the market and the number one GPU just in general is a 1060. So I feel like, you know, a 1060 and a 1440p makes a pretty capable partner in terms of hardware for your money. So it makes sense. And like I said, out of all the monitors I've tested, these are the top five, six if you include the honorable mention, monitors that came out in 2019 for under $1,000. Hope you guys liked it. That'll wrap it up. If you did enjoy it, let me know. Give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. And don't forget everything you see listed for you in the description down below. Well, guys, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.